Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I want to discuss some unnameable types. And we've, we've played with unnameable types before in C++ Weekly. There's certainly no question there, but we haven't really discussed it a whole lot and what it means. So, you know, if I've got this lambda, and if you don't know what a lambda is, watch some more episodes. I've got this lambda, and if I want to store a value of it, I, I have to use auto. This is an unnameable thing. There's no way for me to say something like, you know, whatever, something like that. I can do this because I know someone will mention it. So I can get the type of a lambda there and create a new Lambda object of that type in C++ 20, because I've got to default constructible Lambdas. And Lambda is an unevaluated context, and that brings up some other things. But either way, my Lambda here is essentially some unnameable type. I can give it a type alias, but I cannot directly call its name. So if I want to have a function that returns a Lambda, I have to use auto return type deduction here. There's no way for me to give the type of this function because two different lambdas with even exactly the same signature are different types. So that's one type of unnameable type. Now, another unnameable type that you might be able to play with is a local class. So I can create a struct of some sort here, create an object of this type, and return this thing from my function. Now, if down here in main, I want to actually use this function, I have to use auto if I want to capture this thing. There's no name that I can give it here because the type of this thing, now let's, let's actually try to look at this. This thing is something, something, local, class, something, S. This S right here is the actual name here. So if I return it like this, then I can see that the mangled name is my struct. Local class, something, my struct. It is scoped into the local class function here. So not possible for me to name it. So that's another type of unnameable thing. I'm going to go ahead and give this a uh, more meaningful name. And then another type of unnameable thing is a private inner class. Let's do something like this. So I'm not allowed to create an object of type inner because this is a struct that is an inner class, inner struct, same thing in C++, that is declared inside of another class, and it is itself private. So if I were to try to name this, I get a compilation error. I'm not allowed to name this thing because I don't have access to this. It's a private type, but I'm allowed to get a value to it. And what makes this particular use case very interesting is that this code here is totally valid in C++ 98. Sorry, it would be totally valid in C++ 98 if it were not for this braced initialization here. So let's just, uh, let's do it like that. So this code is totally valid in C++ 98. In C++ 98, we had ways of creating and returning an unnameable type. So those are three unnameable things that I'm aware of. One of them is created for you by the compiler. That is the unspecified name of a Lambda. 
One is a local class or local struct created inside of a function which you can return as of C++14, same with the lambda here. And then the final one is a private inner class inside of an outer class. And again, this one has been valid since the beginning of C++. These all present very interesting ways of actually hiding implementation details uh, intentionally. So if I wanted to make this thing, let's do it like this. Now let's go ahead and comment out these other things that are causing this to fail to compile. Now we're using, we were using auto return type deduction down here. So in this case, I'm using a C++ 11 smart pointer, but I could have been using some other smart pointer type. And I, uh, that's convertible from this thing, or I could have just been using a regular pointer, returning a pointer to base. These are all just various ways of hiding implementation details or maybe not even hiding, but just not exposing things that the user doesn't need to know about when they're using our types in our libraries. So uh, yeah, unnameable types in C++, some of them going back to the beginning. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching this episode.